Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jenna, and today we are going to be doing a Q&A. I'm gonna try so hard to make this shorter than my normal Q&As because if you've watched them, or if you know me, you know I am a rambler and cannot get to the point, so we're gonna try to keep it short. I don't have that many questions, so. Let's get into it. First question, how much free time do you have now that you have Hazel and what do you do with it? Um, free time is something I have to work really hard at if I want to get actual like free time. I have time when she naps and like after she goes to bed, but I have to use it, well I guess I choose to use it for things that I should be doing like doing the dishes, doing laundry, cleaning our room, getting myself ready for the day. Um, I don't know, I guess it's just not really like free time because there's other things that I feel like I have to be doing. Um, but if I'm really good with my time, like if I really focus on getting stuff done right away in the morning and getting housework done that I can get done when she's awake, then when she naps I can normally spend time like reading or um, doing my makeup or something fun or like filming videos. Mainly my free time is at night after she goes to bed and um, we normally like watch The Office or a movie or read or play Scrabble <laughs> or I take a shower because that's like the time that I have enough time to take a full shower. The next question is kind of a doozy. Um, thanks for making me think and actually be um, pondering this stuff. <laughs> The question is, what book of the Bible are you studying right now and what has the Lord been teaching you? Okay, so if I'm being honest, I've been really bad at reading my Bible lately. What I've been trying to do lately, like the past couple of weeks, is to read at least something in my Bible every morning, like right when I'm having my coffee, like right before I do anything. And some days I forget or I just don't do it, but I've been trying really hard to do that every day. Um, like most mornings, I'll try to read one chapter of Psalms. Um, also, another thing I've been doing to get back into the Word and try and like get into a routine again and want to dig deeper in it, I've been putting on my Bible app like audio, like I listen to the Bible app. So what I went through this last week was James. I've read that book of the Bible so many times, but I feel like this time that I was listening through it, there was so many things that popped out at me that I was like, what? Like, I've never thought of it that way before. Like, wow, how did I miss that all these times I've read this book? What has the Lord been teaching me lately? Um, I feel like it's kind of hard for me to answer that because I haven't been so great at digging into the word, but um, what I feel most like convicted of recently and what I've been learning just through life and prayer is patience. <laughs> like. In raising Hazel, just patience with her when she's like grabbing at my hair, such silly stuff, but just like being patient with her and being patient with her when she's throwing a fit or something and um, also being patient in seasons of waiting. Just a lot of situations where patience is needed are coming my way and I'm learning to be more patient right now. Another thing that has stuck out to me lately is that um, I am very anxious and worried all the time. Not necessarily about anything specific, sometimes there is. So I've been learning how important it is to cast all my anxieties on the Lord. It's not like I can do anything about it anyway. My husband always tells me, worry about what you can control, um, and if you can't, don't worry about it. And so that's something I'm learning is to stop worrying so much, and when I am worrying, to pray about it and just cast it on to the Lord. Okay, next question is, what was the best and hardest part about getting married young? My fiance and our my fiance and I are 19. Well, congratulations, first of all. Um, I when I saw this, I was like, this is gonna be such a fun one to answer because I love talking about this topic. If you happen to be new here, my husband and I got married um, about two and a half years ago. I was 18 and he was 23, so we were both relatively young. I was very young. Um, but I love talking about this. Like, I just love talking about it. So I'm excited to answer. I couldn't, I didn't know if you want me to pick like one specific hardest thing and one specific best thing, but I just picked three, like three of my top ones. 
so I hope that's okay. So let's actually do the hardest part first because then we can end on like a good note. <laughs> so the hardest part for me, I think, wasn't even like about marriage. It was just that I was in this brand new stage, fresh out of high school, and I was married, living with my husband on our own, and um, like getting ready to start a family and worrying about bills and medical stuff and just almost like adult stuff just thrown at me when I was a teenager, which again, this, you have to expect that when you're getting married at 18. But I was fine with that. In this stage, it was so different from going from high school, being thrown into married life because I feel like it was really hard for me to relate with some of my friends who weren't in that same stage. Um, like, it was just hard for us to relate to each other. Like, hanging out was harder because night times was when my husband was home and when I wanted to spend time with him. Weekends, he didn't work, so I wanted to spend time with him. So it's like, when do you have time to hang out with your friends who are working when your husband's working too and they want to prioritize time with him? And also just like, the different stages made friendships really hard for me to like, relate with other friends and I think also vice versa but now thankfully that has kind of smoothed out a little bit and I feel like I've gotten the hang of balancing friends in different stages. I mean if you think about it when you go through life everyone is going to be in different stages at different times. I think just for me it was so hard because I was stuck in between like high school teenager and like trying to be older, adult, married, starting a family. Like, they were just clashing with each other and then that made it hard for me personally to relate and really connect with my friends that I had in high school. So I think that was one of the, like, the hardest parts. The second hardest thing was I was young and with that came a lot of selfishness. Like, I feel like I didn't learn to be more selfless until probably like a year into marriage. The first year of our marriage was like, I think I changed so much that year in a good way, but it was so crazy to see the growth. Like looking back to where I was when we first got married, I was so selfish and like um, kind of clingy and just not very understanding. And I think a lot of that was age, just not having very much like life experience. Um, so that was hard, but that was just something I got to learn along the way and thankfully my husband was very patient with me. Um, and then the third thing, which is kind of minor, but just something to add in, um, was that I missed my family right away. Like, I was very excited to get married and move out, move in with my husband and stuff, but I, I am very close with my mom and dad and my sisters, and just was hard for a bit to be like, not going over to their house every night. I would always be like, can we go to my parents? Can we go to my parents? And like, I think that was, hard for my husband Josh because he was like, he loves my family and we both are very close with them, but it was like, I was almost stuck in like, I'm still in like that childlike phase where I still like want to be with my mom and dad and then also I'm married and living on, living on my own so I always wanted to go visit them and it just like sometimes for me was like oh I miss my mom and dad <laughs> but um, I still miss my mom and dad if I don't see them often but thankfully we're both very close with them and we see them very frequently so and let's move on to the best parts so the first one is that you get to grow up with your spouse pretty much like a lot of people use that as argument to not get married is that you're not like grown up yet you're brain still changes until what you're like 25 or something like you're not your brain's not fully developed till you're in your mid 20s I don't remember the exact age but to me that was what was like fun I feel like my husband was in his my husband was around that age like 23 but I was so young and I still see it as like he was young too because I feel like 23 is still relatively young to get married but I feel like like I said, that first year of marriage was so much growth for me that I feel so blessed that it got to be with my husband because it was like growing together and people say it as if you're gonna grow apart, but really if you just make the effort, it's like you grow together. And I think having him beside me was just fun, going from like our dating like childish phase 
to engage, to marry, to now parents. Like we've got to do so much life together already because we met each other when we were so young. Especially me, I met him when I was 15. I feel like we just got to do so much life together already and I don't take that for granted at all. Okay, so this next one I don't really, really know how to word. It kind of goes with the last one, but it's just that we've had so much time together already. Like we have, Lord willing, our whole lives ahead of us and we've already had so much time together and that makes me very thankful. Like I want to appreciate every moment that I've got to spend with Josh up until this point and now like even more. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway. The third thing is just kind of little, but it's that when we first got married, like life wasn't so serious. Like we had bills and like I was saying with the friendship thing, we had that like stressful adulting, I hate that term, but like what people consider adulting stuff, like just the stuff you don't want to talk about. Taxes, bills, medical stuff, like all the things that you don't want to deal with pretty much. We still had all that, but I feel like since we were young, we still had like a childlike perspective to it almost. Not in an immature, naive way, but just things like, we could just like laugh about things. Things weren't so serious. Life wasn't just a serious heavy weight on us. I feel like we still had a little bit of our childlike joy and curiosity and I think that was very helpful too in growing into a married couple rather than just like dating. So I hope those made sense and I wasn't just like word vomiting. <laughs> On to the next one. Um, tips for newlyweds and how to be a good wife. Love your channel. Thank you. <laughs> so tips for newlyweds and how to be a good wife. I feel like I'm not qualified to answer this question. Like sometimes I feel like I am the worst wife ever. I just feel like not a good wife sometimes. <laughs> and um, that's like in, that's like a push for me to get better and do better, which is why I always wanna be growing into a better person, better wife, better mom. But I just don't feel qualified to answer this, but I'll give you some things that I've learned, I guess, along the way that make things a little bit better. <laughs> Tips for newlyweds. So, okay, keep this in mind that this is like my experience and this is just my opinion. Everyone's relationship is different, but in my experience, my biggest tip is patience and communication. Um, I just feel like when you first get married, there's so much new things you're learning about each other. Even if you know each other so well before, it's like now you really know each other. Now it's like, you know, everything and you're just learning like how to live with them, get along with them, some of their quirks and some of their pet peeves and things that are your pet peeves about them and just like, I don't know, things that you have to learn about each other. And so patience is like huge. It was super huge for me. Like I said, I was not very patient and I had to learn very quickly. Patience is gonna keep me sane and keep Josh sane. So practice patience and also communication. If there's even something little that bothers you and it's enough to have a conversation about it, don't hold back. Try to have a conversation about it because the more that gets swept under the rug, the more it's gonna bubble up and eventually explode in your face and that is not good. And then another thing is to like outserve each other. It's not a competition in the way of like, well, I'm better than him because I did this or he's better than me because he did this. But just always be trying to serve your spouse and do nice things for them. Um, just love them as best you can. And then things I've learned about being a better wife, there's always room for improvement, but things that I've learned and the ways I try to grow as a better wife and ways I try to serve my husband. So again, these are my experiences. Every man is different. Your husband is gonna be different than my husband is, but this is just general what I've learned. Um, the first thing that was really hard for me to learn and is something that helps me a lot to love my husband the best way I can is to show love the way they feel love. Is that the right terms? What is the word? I don't know what the word is I'm thinking of, but show love the way that they feel love, the way that they interpret love, I guess. Um, so for instance, I'll just give examples. My love languages, for instance, are like quality time and physical touch. So just like sitting on the couch together and like holding hands, just something as simple as that. That's like, if Josh comes up to me and grabs my hand, I feel very loved in that moment. But for him, 
his main love language when we first got married and still is today I would say is acts of service which is of course I appreciate when he does things for me especially now I know that's how he shows love is acts of service because that's the way he feels it I obviously am appreciative of that but for me it's like like I said quality time physical touch give me a kiss on the cheek and let's go for a drive and that's pretty much like <laughs> that's like my ideal whatever and for him it's acts of service so like for a while right when we first got married I just like grab his hand because that's how I show love or I'd be like let's watch a movie together or um, I would like scratch his back or something like that and of course he still feels like love that way but that's the way that I feel it and so when I learned that his love language is acts of service it helped me a lot to be like okay he really appreciates when I make his breakfast in the morning or make him his favorite meal so when I learned to show love that way because that is not natural for me that is I feel like that helped a lot was to show love the way that he feels it so not necessarily the way you feel it but the way he feels it and um, you hear me talking about the love languages I'm sure you've heard of it but there's like a quiz online you can take the five love languages quiz and it will tell you what your like love language is and then you can have your spouse take it and it will tell you what theirs is and whatever their love language is is normally how they'll show it to normally and so yeah I feel like it just helps with understanding your spouse better and how to love them better there's also a book which we haven't read it but we did the quiz right when we first got married the next thing that I think is really important and has been really beneficial for me to think about and constantly have like in my mind is to become a safe zone for your husband so I don't know if that makes sense but let me explain a little bit more so what I mean by that is be someone that your husband looks forward to coming home to try to be welcoming and loving and nurturing <laughs> I don't know I just think that men thrive off that and so I always try to be like a safe zone whether that's someone to vent to or just quiet time or a hug or a nice meal on the counter just making our house and me a comfortable place to come and um, not adding any stress to them of course I don't do all these things perfectly like like I said sometimes I feel like a terrible wife but this is what I like to have in my mind to try my best to be a nice wife <laughs> so along with this I'm gonna read a couple verses in the Bible sort of about this um, this is about the opposite this is what the Bible says Proverbs 21 9 it is better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house short shared with a quarrelsome wife and then Proverbs 21 19 it is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. I think that just like shows, like it'd be better to live in a desert, think about that, a desert by yourself than to live with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. That's something I really try not to be, is a nagging wife. Like I do not want to nag him. I don't want to cause any more stress to my husband than he already has on his plate. And so, I don't know, try to remember those verses, even if you feel like nagging, like things aren't getting done that you want done. Just remember those verses, it is better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. <laughs> and then the last one that I think is really important for most, if not all men, is to show appreciation and like, I don't know what the correct word is, but show them that you're proud of them. Show them you appreciate them and that you're proud of them, proud of their hard work proud of their whatever their strengths may be just find things that you admire about them and let them know because I think all people thrive off that but especially men really thrive off appreciation and respect at least my husband <laughs> and so I think that that's something really important to remember for any any wife out there and the last question is what has motherhood changed for you like hairstyles hobbies etc Hair equals in a bun, unless like right now she's sleeping, so it's down. <laughs> um, like if we're ever in the car, my hair is always gonna be down because I never get to wear my hair down anymore because she yanks on it. <laughs> but um, that's okay, it's all right. It makes me appreciate my hair down more now that I have to wear it up more often. So 
My hairstyle has definitely changed into pretty much a ponytail slick back or a messy bun or a braid all the time. Hobbies, I have to be very intentional about. I don't really do many hobbies anymore. Like, I don't really have many hobbies anymore. I love to film videos. I love, love editing. It has changed my hobbies. I don't really do as many. Like, I don't just spend all my time doing things I want to do. I spend time doing things I should be doing. So. That's changed a little bit, but I would not change that for the world because I have her, so. <laughs> There's a couple more like minor things that have changed. Actually, not really minor. One's pretty big. I used to be like very, very, very self-conscious. Like, I could just pick apart everything about my face, my body, whatever. Very self-conscious. And I realized like the second I got pregnant, I barely thought about it. Like. Obviously, I still care about what I look like and I still want to be presentable and look nice, especially for my husband, but I just don't have time to like worry about little stupid things that don't matter. Like, I'd rather be a confident woman and mother as an example for her when she gets older. Little girls, little boys, little kids, even adults do not need that stuff in their life. We don't need to be worrying about that. It doesn't matter. And so I feel like that has helped me a lot and I'm so grateful for that. That's a good positive change. <laughs> so that is it for the questions. I hope that you got your question answered um, and thoroughly. I know this video is probably much longer than it should have been, but thank you for watching it, especially if you watched the end. If you've been watching me for a while or you're brand new and you like this video, then feel free to subscribe. You can subscribe in the corner down below and I'll pop my Instagram up. You can find me on there, send me a message. That's always fun. <laughs> so yeah. That's it. Again, thank you for watching and maybe I'll see you next time. Bye.